Hello everyone and welcome back to Solid State Physics in a Nutshell. My name's Eric. And I'm Nicole. We've got a short one for you today, but I don't think you'll complain. Okay, so earlier, when we originally constructed our real space lattices, it felt almost arbitrary how we specified our origin and lattice vectors. Today, we're going to take a look at the reciprocal space for centered cells and see if those choices mattered. Previously, we saw that making a centered square cell versus just a square cell didn't reveal anything new. So let's see if that holds true for the reciprocal space. On the left, we have the primitive square cell, and on the right, we have the centered square cell. First, I'll draw in the reciprocal vectors g1 and g2 for each cell. Because a1 and a2 are relatively small for the square cell, this corresponding g1 and g2 will be bigger than the g1 and g2 for the centered square cell. Picking our origin is here. We can use these g vectors to populate the reciprocal lattice for each cell. But of course we get different reciprocal lattices. Before anyone gets worried or confused, this is okay. At the end of the day, the reciprocal spaces could look vastly different as long as the intensities work out for both cases. And for that, we look to the structure factor. For the normal square cell, with one atom at each lattice point, we found that the structure's factor S equaled F0 at all HKL so that we should observe peaks at every lattice point as shown by the X. But for the centered square cell, we now have a two atom basis. Assuming all the atoms are the same, the structure factor for this case is 2F0 for h plus k is an even integer, and 0 for h plus k being an odd integer. So now let's mark an x for every expected peak position for this case. And we can see the spacing of expected peaks positions is the same in both cases. So centering makes no difference when it comes to diffraction. Hmm, I wonder if this is also true for choice of lattice. If you start with a square lattice in real space, but pick primitive, oblique lattice vectors. Does it create a square lattice in reciprocal space? Ooh, that's a good question. We'll leave it for you guys to deal with. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed today's short video. Next week, Nicole and I will be looking at applications of diffraction. See you then.